All right, thank you everyone. So I hope you really had a great lunch. Um, so I'm going to kick things off by actually kind of um, allowing our, each of our panelists to give a brief descriptions of themselves. I um, want to start with the ladies first. So um, Isabella, maybe you kick it off and then follow by Pan. Then I think. Okay. Uh, so hi everyone. My name is Isabella. I lead the growth team at Love Bonito. Uh, basically, we run product team at Love Bonito plus performance marketing. Uh, my background initially was more in marketing. Then I gradually moved into a more product role. Hi, I'm Pan. I'm from Cactus. Uh, we are system integrator for enterprise retail ERP systems. So me and my team, I implement uh, ERP integrating into Magento across uh, Asia Pack. So I'm Ankit Agrawal. I'm leading uh, from Ranosis, uh, based out of Singapore office. And I'm leading e-commerce practice within the organization and have been working in Magento ecosystem from last uh, 10 years. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Vikrant. Uh, I'm working as business solution architect with Magento. Uh, I'm based out of Bangalore, and I have been working with Magento since last 12 years, almost it's, since, since its inception. And uh, yeah, that has been my journey so far. Right, thank you. Okay, so the panel uh, discussion today is mobile first, myth or reality, right? So anybody seen the... Uh, movie, or not the movie, the um, short clips called Myth Busters before the TV series, right? Well, we're going to bust some myths today. And uh, each of these panelists here is going to help me do that. So uh, we're going to get into some insightful discussions today. So please feel free to take some notes and then you will notice that some, there's a link behind. Ignore that until the end of the session. I'll tell you what it is. But you should get uh, clarity towards the uh, middle. So I'd like to start with Isabella because um, she's closest to the uh, voice of the end customer being uh, from Love Bonito, right? So Isabella, it's a two-part question, right? So the first, um, did your organization plan on a mobile strategy when you're building out your site? And secondly, if yes, how much of that strategy revolves around the demographics of your user base? And if it no, what's the decision made on the demographics of your user base? Um, yeah, so yes, we definitely did. Um, so I guess maybe for those of you who doesn't really know what's Love Bonito, we are a, a mono fashion brand. Um, actually started from Singapore eight years ago. So we started online, now we're present offline. So recently, we actually just renovated our website. So the first thing when we start building the website is to look at data, right? We understand 70% of our users actually browsing us uh, from mobile. So then we break this down into two parts. One is test and development, then the other one is testing. So during the development um, phase, we actually did a lot of research on understanding what's the most common screen size for us uh, on mobile. So those are the, I guess, the key focus for us to understand how do we design the mobile experience and how, to, how, how do we get our customer to have the better experience. And we also look at, I guess, how other players run their sites to get learnings as well. Um, then during the um, testing phase, we actually literally forced everybody in the company to test on mobile. Uh, you might be surprised, I guess, as a consumer, we always on mobile, but when you work, you actually want to use desktop because it's more convenient. So I guess that's something as product manager, you need to constantly remind your um, people in the company and make sure uh, you establish the right framework and process to make sure everybody actually think mobile because it's not going to be a one time off, we also still has a lot of things to improve um, from the data. We're still collecting uh, like the heat map and etc. So it's really about um, keep iterating. Yeah. No, thanks. Were the staff getting paid over time for testing? Sorry? Was the staff getting paid over time for testing your site? Uh, yes, of course. They are? It's wow. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> Probably paid in kind with some clothing. Okay, great. Ankit. You work with lots of customers. Um, we've heard the buzzword about mobile first uh, for so many years today, and like I mentioned, we want to do some myth busting today. So I'm going to put you in the spot. Is mobile first is real strategy for the majority of our customers out there, and how do we increase it, and why should we increase it? So yeah, I think in my experience, uh, we go every day meet a lot of customers. And merchants, uh, I have seen that uh, all, almost every merchant will ask question whether the solution is mobile optimized or not. And after that, their second question will be how they will explore the possibility of having mobile apps and all. 
So I think this pretty much answers the possible, like the mobile first strategy, how the merchants like Club Bonito and all are giving preference to the mobile first strategy and for their customers. And uh, moreover, they are exploring now new features like PWA and all this coming. So merchants are uh, pretty excited and very keen to learn about all this technology and how, how they can harness the power of all these technologies. And coming to the point of uh, how should and why should we increase, uh, I would say in the, uh, by 2020 research and data from various sources sites that uh, more than 50% of the users are going to uh, do purchase from the mobile only. So this, this looks a quite uh, big market for the mobile commerce in the coming years. And uh, apart from that, uh, consumers in, we have observed the trend that uh, consumers in APAC are uh, always, they are always on the mobile, doing something, some research on the mobile. So whether they buy a product online or from any store, uh, they, the research is going to happen on the mobile. So before going to the in-store, they will do complete research about the product on mobile and then they make the in-store purchase. So the mobile first strategy, I would say it will help you to increase your uh, online revenue. It will help you to increase your in-store revenue also. So that's a big point for considering all this. And coming to the point how we can increase is uh, definitely there is a lot of uh, data. You will need to make decisions. We will talk, I think, in coming questions what, uh, what type of data you should, uh, what metrics you should consider to make uh, data-driven decisions. So, but few things is like first and foremost, uh, I would say is the uh, the customer experience, the navigational experience should be very smooth. The product should be quick searchable. You need to make sure that the whatever customers are looking, they can get to that information very quickly. And new technologies like augmented reality, Apple Pay, Google Pay are coming. We need to ensure that customers are having seamless checkout across all the platforms. Uh, augmented reality is coming, like Swedish firm IKEA is harnessing the power of this technology. Is the technology that will use the smartphone camera to transpose the digital content into the real world. So you can actually feel how this uh, product is actually gonna look like. So this, these are the technologies which uh, harness the power and increase the mobile first strategy. All right, great, Ankit. So, picked up two important points that you mentioned, uh, speed and innovation as well, which is really what the platform is all about in, in terms of uh, enabling innovation. Uh, Tuling, over to you. So, you have organizations to transform and take their business to greater heights. Um, how much does those transformation involve a mobile strategy and how do you generally measure its effectiveness? My background, we work with uh, brick and mortar businesses, I mean retail businesses a lot more than the very trendy one like Love Bonita. So I'm really excited, like sitting beside a beautiful lady, understanding how they actually transform their business using or discussing about mobile first. So most of my retailers, um, they have huge ERP systems. So what we do, um, we, we do have to do a lot more case study with them and to give them examples on to how these uh, real-life trending um, retailers, uh, online retailers, merchants are doing as well as them. So in their strategy, they, they, as we put in our proposition, put in our solution roadmap, they wanted, or rather these businesses, traditional businesses, they wanted an element of um, online. But how and how effective this is, so most of them started with, um, in fact, if not most, then all of them wanted to transform into, hey, I must have a digital footprint in my, in my uh, plan, in my strategy. So uh, most of them started with mobile responsiveness site, moving on to transactional native apps, and then subsequently, you know, look into platforms and integration into other players um, like marketplaces and that. So all these are not a one day or like a one year or maybe it is a five to an eight year roadmap that they are looking at. So transforming them is um, really has been so exciting for our business. So we see this growth of business um, taking them to online, offline, combining the two strategies together and that is a very beautiful combination in itself. So to your point, Terence, you said, um, how do we measure effectiveness? 
Sadly, we don't. <laughs> so we, we don't have a, honestly, we don't have a tool today to, 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 to measure this effectiveness because um, for these businesses, realistically speaking, they have nothing to, 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 to benchmark. So the first benchmark is to, oh, okay, so long I have, if I have 500,000 loyalty members, I can have 10,000 sign-ups or downloads in the first month, that would be an achievement. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of um, um, initiative usually, yeah, for a benchmark or a measurement. Okay, great. So uh, Vikran, um, Magento together with some of its partners have embarked on an initiative called the Mobile E-Commerce Optimization Initiative. And for those of you in the audience, it's actually flashed on the screen behind us. Um, can you briefly describe why this initiative was formed and what we hope to achieve? Yeah, um, so you, all of us might have uh, seen the presentation today given by PayPal. So this is something uh, in extension to that. So we at Magento got together with some of our uh, SI partners and we choose some of the customers to plan around a mobile optimization exper uh, experiment or a, an, a, a process that using which we can further uh, lay down the process to go ahead and optimize a website. So uh, before I explain more about it, I would like to speak a bit about mobile first and how it is impacting uh, the overall ecosystem. India only, if I say, has around 350 million mobile subscribers as of now. And it is expected to go over 500 million by 2020. So that's just India I'm talking about out of APAC. In uh, the mobile first initiative, it has always been there. It was declared by Google back in 2010. And then from there, people are looking after it and they want, everyone wants to be mobile first. Um, in the Google presentation today, uh, earlier in the day, we saw all those numbers, one second, three second delays, and how much it impacts in terms of cost and revenue, in terms of revenue generation to any kind of a website. So um, people say from the merchant side, they know how painful it is if the website is not performing very well on mobile. You will, you will, you will crash out. Uh, there are more traffic that comes from mobile. I know a couple of businesses which have around 95% uh, conversion on mobile, actually. Right, and uh, they, they, they focus more on mobile. Website is there just because they have to be on web, else all of the conversion is happening on mobile, and they are pretty million dollar uh, companies. Right, so considering the same, Magento along with its SI partners went ahead to create this initiative called uh, mobileoptimization.org. You can go ahead on this uh, URL and you can get to know more about how uh, Magento, PayPal, and um, high conversion basically collaborated and now uh, with the customers, th with the real data set, we are able to project some kind of uh, reports, uh, some kind of experiments. Not all of these experiments fit for, uh, it's not like a blanket for everyone. It has to be chosen wisely for each of each and every customers that you are working ahead with. But this is an initiative which Magento has taken and it's kind of a give back to our community so, uh, so that we, we all understand how mobile optimization is going to work and how it is going to impact our um, customers who actually are, uh, are the one whom, uh, for whom we are working for. Right? So, yeah, so that, this is a great initiative. Every one of you must look into this URL. Right, thanks, Vikrant. So, uh, Sweden, there are about 14 experiments today on this site. Um, do any of these experiments uh, resonate with you? How would the experiment results influence the strategy with your clients? And hopefully you can tell us whether that sadness you mentioned earlier might be changed to happiness. Yes, definitely, Terence. So as I take a picture, uh, picture to all these experiments, and I, I find it quite exciting. Um, initially, I didn't know what to spot for, so I went deeper into understanding these experiments and the intentions of these experiments. So what I discovered is that the beautiful part of this experiment is that you have controls and then you have what is in the new that you can, you, you can see. So the customer could immediately gratify that, hey, you know, my mobile strategy has been designed. I, no one has ever told them that design can be, um, uh, can be improved or such little things in this, these experiments can improve how they are checking through, how customers uh, are behaving to track through the cars and that. So I think these experiment, def experiments definitely resonate with um, our business proposition. 
we could uh, use them as very quick examples of how they could um, view solutions in a very different way as to, hey, this is not standard templates. You can have the avenue of enhancement showing how check-through can be quicker or can be easier, uh, can, can be measured easily. Yeah. All right, great. So before I get to Isabella, so I see some of you are trying to look for those experiments. Good on you. All right. Yeah, please go ahead and click on the link or search for that link. And uh, you know, as we talk, maybe those things would come um, to you uh, easily. So Isabella, there's some great statistics being reported when merchants enable one of these experiments, right? Um, as a merchant yourself, uh, how receptive is your organization to embrace some of these results and enable them? Um, yes, so we are actually extremely receptive. Um, actually, on top of that, um, to run the similar type of test that we've seen uh, in the URL is something that we have always been wanting to do um, because we were revamping the site, so it was, doesn't really make sense to run it before. So in the, actually, in the past one month, um, my team and I were actually looking at different frameworks to prioritize different tests and looking at like, different tools to help us run those tests, either it's on mobile or it's on desktop. Um, so one of the things that just would like to share a bit more is that when we're doing the research, we realized this um, concept is pretty cool. It's called a prioritization framework. So you actually build your own test idea bank. So very similar to, I guess, all the test ideas in the library that um, in mobile optimized. Um, then you actually get everybody who thought of an, uh, a test to write what is their hypothesis, right? So like I predict by changing this product label on the product detail page will improve our mobile CTR by 10%. Then they will write about what is the objective and et cetera. Um, then after that, you can actually rate yourself against how confident you think this hypothesis will solve the problem and also how big is the impact in a scale from one to five. So when you talk about impact, then it's probably going to be impacting revenue. You should be able to do a sizing um, to size it and also grade it. Then the other one is actually the effort, right? Because if you want to run tests, the most important thing is you want to run tests that requires actually least development effort. Um, but then, of course, then you have a scale from one to five as well. So once you average out, you probably will know, I guess, which test you want to go first and which is the one that probably bring the most impact to your business, then you kind of um, continue from there. So that's why I guess we are actually very ready for this and uh, we really want to try it. Yeah. Awesome. So Ankit, um, we have a few SI partners uh, joining us in this initiative. So being part of an SI organization yourself, um, can you share your thoughts on the benefits of this initiative to prospects, customers um, you are currently engaging with? Yeah, I think since this platform already has plethora of experiments been already implemented and the results are being published, so it's a good, very good platform for them to come and understand the features uh, which uh, other merchants have already tried and make the data-driven decisions. It will give them much uh, more confidence in implementing these features rather than uh, risking any new functionality which lacks the feedback from the market. And I have experienced that they feel much more comfortable in implementing features which has some, which has received the feedback from the market or any data is available. For example, we, we have been talking to our one of big clients from long time and we, uh, for improving their checkout experience, we suggested them many payment gateways including uh, Google Checkout, Google Pay, Apple Pay, but it took um, them a lot of time to make the decisions because there is no data available like how much the revenue it can improve. So I think this platform will definitely give them uh, to uh, make decisions quickly. Yeah. All right, good. So seeing is believing, right? Okay. Um, so Vikrant coming from Magento, can you share with us some of the reasons why Magento together with PayPal and high conversion are actually spearheading this initiative? Yeah, so the major reason is that Magento itself is one of the biggest e-commerce player in the industry, right? We know that, and uh, we, we we capture a lot of market share, uh, both in terms of community and um, enterprise kind of a customer base. So we want we always want to give back to our uh, community, and we want them to understand how mobile optimization can help them out, how how we can. Uh, how they can leverage uh, out of these experiments with uh, with three uh, big players working out on real-time data 
and seeing that data, like like Terran just said, seeing is believing, right? You can see it, touch it, feel it, you know it's true. So that is why with, with the data, with the type, type of experimentations that we are doing and the kind of the user base that we have in Magento um, ecosystem, uh, we believe it's our moral. It's part of our moral responsibility to come up with such initiative to help our community understand, based on the data-driven analysis, and then from there help them improve their um, improve the performance and sales. Obviously, the at the end of the day, it's all about sales, right? Everything that Merchant does is for sales. So, so improve the sales cycle. With this, I'll actually also like to give um, to call back what Ankit said uh, that uh, people. Uh, the reason for mobile first is that people actually generally what happens is most of the time we we explore on mobile because we are always on mobile as i said um, we explore on mobile and then we decide whether we have to purchase it on mobile or brick on store i'll give you my example it has been 3 months i have moved uh, from a place in north india called chandigarh to bangalore so in chandigarh we didn't have a service called amazon prime uh, prime now so prime now is a grocery ordering service that is in Bangalore. It promises that it will deliver you grocery within two hours. Believe me, I have, we have stopped shopping grocery since, since last three months in Bangalore. We are just, uh, it's just online order that we do. We just go there at any given moment of time, we just add product, we place the order, and the grocery is at our home within two hours. And it takes somewhere around an, two hours to go to a grocery store one side in Bangalore in the, in the traffic. That is example number one for mobile first. Example number two, and I think all of you must go ahead and look into the case study of Trivago. Trivago was one of the earliest adopter of PWA. There is a very good case study of Trivago on Google, uh, think Google. And you would see drastically Trivago was able to optimize their uh, customer downfall and increase their sales by going PWA and mobile first. So. So again, now coming back to what Terence asked, these two cases studies, one of my own life, the other one of Trivago, is actually the reason why you should go, why, you, why every merchant should have mobile first as an idea. Thank you. Awesome. There you go, Amazon Prime, two hours. Anybody in the audience audit coffee? They will deliver to your seat in 10 minutes? No? Okay. Time for one last question for the whole panel, right? So, the mobile commerce initiative looking for merchants and SIs to volunteer their time. So do you think the results we currently have will entice merchants and organizations like yourselves to join the initiative? Um, anyone can answer first. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we are very much looking forward to uh, join this uh, initiative. And in fact, we already have few case studies with one of the few of our merchants as part of A-B testing and all those. So we would be very happy to publish all those here and uh, take uh, give back to community. Okay. Yeah. Any last words? Um, yes. Yeah. No? Maybe I, I can share. Um, so I guess definitely yes. Um, I guess the foundation mobile first is customer first, right? We need to be where customer is. Um, that's why I guess that summarizes everything nicely. Okay. Cool. So. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, and um, the, coming again from Magento, I think uh, it is must. Uh, we would request all the merchant and the SIs to participate in it. Give us the real data uh, so that our SIs can work on real experiments. We can get out with some real case studies and some real statistics. Again, touch it, feel it. You can see it, touch it, feel it. It exists, right? So it, it is very important for all of us to see how we can collaborate and be part of this initiative. Thank you, guys. So just to summarize, I mean, for all of you in the uh, audience today, so this site called mobileoptimized.org, please look at it. Uh, we welcome um, contributions in terms of joining the organizations, not in money, just joining the organizations as in SI or merchants. Uh, come together as a community, share our experiences, share our results, and what we aim to do is to share that collective wisdom so everybody can actually help and, um, you know, obviously improve on their site experience for their end users. Right. So once again, I thank the panelists, um, Ankit, um, Is Isabel Pan, and Vikrant, and of all, obviously all of you for attending this session. Thank you so much.